welcome and just bear with me one minute while I uh, just top the glass oh we're having um, Carlin hot and spicy beef curry made from squa squatch made from scratch depends on you <laughs> from scratch and uh, well, I'll give you a look at it. We got some garlic and chili naan bread. See that? That's the bread. There's the curry. In the curry, there is beef, uh, diced beef. There is, um, what else did I put in? Uh, onions, garlic, ginger, my own chilies, curry powder, coriander, turmeric. There's a bit of paprika which I've put in after. Um, ground black pepper, salt, mustard powder. And it is quite hot. That's a bit of onion there. There's a bit of my own chilli. Look at the beef. Beautiful. So here we go. Mm. That beef. Paul? Yeah? You're in the jar... In the Learn to speak. You're in the wrong job, my old mate. Beautiful. Mm. And also, poppadoms. <laughs> I love these. So, how's your week been? Told you I'd do this, didn't I? Three ways you can make curry easy, not so easy, and the proper way. What's that? Yes, I did film making it. Um, I've not gone into detail with the video. Only a time thing. But, you know, like, I've cut out bits like chopping the onion and chilli and ginger and all this sort of stuff. But, I show the step by, you know, a basic look at the stages I make it, what I've used in it, the ingredients and how much. That's the important thing. In honesty, the taste is superb, but it takes a while for you to get your own heat and your own taste, really. And that's mine. Oh. Don't often have beef. I am. Um, my favourite curry is lamb. Mm. That. Uh, it should, well, it is hot, especially if you get one of the chilies in you. But it's, for me, it's just a kick, a bite of heat. Um, but the taste there, the garlic, ginger, everything, um, well, what can you say? Everything sort of blends with each. Oh, look at this. Mmm. Everything complements each other in ingredients and for, me, for my taste. Right? I'll put the video up tomorrow. I have made it. And um, I hope you enjoy it. If you try it. But as I say, you might want to fiddle about with the ingredients or the, the spices to suit you. But if you follow this, you'll probably think it's a hot curry. I don't know. Depends where your class is hot. Mm. So you've had a good week. Been looking everywhere for this. And found it today. Not for any reason. You know, when you remember, I got loads of hats. And I thought, hang on, there's one missing. I got a, I got a camouflage fleece hat. This, this one here. Couldn't anyway. Came across it today, and it was somebody. It was in a drawer. Well, where it shouldn't have been really. So that's another one to the collection. <coughs> that's fantastic. Hmm. Don't mind me eating, yeah. 
Oh. What are you having? Oh, very nice. <laughs> yeah, I know some of you have eaten before and after and all that. Mm. Cheers. Really goes nice with the ice cold. The cold one. And, uh, I'm looking into making something maybe next week if I got the time <clears throat> which will help me make something else I love eating homemade so I'll make what makes this stuff I'll make good. there's a product you can buy Bit of a snack, bit of a delicacy, whatever you want to call it. Goes well with beer. And um, I think it's popular in Africa. Bit of a clue. But I'm going to attempt making the maker of it. And then making the thing itself. I'm not going to say nothing yet because I don't do it. But that might be another video coming. Um, right, on that, turn it around. If you can see, that is a piece of garlic. So it's chopped. I sort of crush the ginger on a, a grater so it comes out sort of like a mush. You can slice the ginger, but I sort of crushed it. Mm. The only thing I didn't add to this, and I should have done really, forgot, I'd forgot, was sometimes I add half a tin of chopped tomatoes, or fresh tomatoes, you can add two or three of them. Forgot. But, oh, it's lovely. Man, bread. Nice. I prefer, though, the sun blushed. Mm. A bit more of a crunch to that. But it's still soft bread inside. Um, we had some severe frosts. One in particular this week. I was going to work and it was minus five degrees below freezing. And I know, yes, yeah, some American people say, what, that's our summer. That. But um, very cold. And... Uh, Mm. Very good, really. Bum. <laughs> I said I love these. Go on then. I'm looking here because <clears throat> I, I thought I'd put something out to show you lot. It's probably looking at me in the face, I'll come to it in a minute. Mm. Talk amongst yourselves. What I did with this batch as well, which I explained in the video actually, I made, I used a lot of beef, far too much for this one meal, and I've um, now I've put two freezer bags full. So two portions, two meals in the freezer. And then when I fancy a beef curry in the future, pull it out the day before, defrost, heat up and enjoy. Um, I like to do that with a stew as well. When I make a big pot of stew. Living the dream here. Living the dream. Mm. They have been tangled. Made in Sweden. That's it.
Good blade. Mm. More a knife. Bright. The reason for that is, I think if, if you use it in the woods or leave it on the floor, you'd see it straight away, you won't lose it. Um, good stuff. That was sent to me, that. As was a few other things. As was this. Fango. See that? Fango track seat. What it is is a very very lightweight inflatable then all you do is unravel it, undo it, and you get yourself a seat pad really. <laughs> Thank you Vango. That's what happens when you make videos then. Eh? Oh maybe not. Oh that's beautiful that. Mm. Mm. You know people say don't give up your day job and tasting this they be saying give up your day job get on the blower to Sainsbury's got a recipe here you'd like Lovely. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll try a bit on. Oh, you bugger nearly dropped that. Nice. Right, try a bit on there. You see? Mouth big enough. Mouth's big enough. Mm. Um. Well. The holiday season's over. Christmas is over. New Year is here. Unbelievable. Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? It's, um... Excuse me. Oh, I don't know. It's just time... I suppose if you, the old, well, a lot of people have said, I've said in via many vlogs, you know, time goes, God, the weeks go. <laughs> and people that are older than me, much older, said, you think it's going quick now, you wait till you retire and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> mm. There we go. Mm. I mean, um, yesterday, a bird I rarely see on my feeders now. Well, they used to feed off the ground, really. I should put. Uh, all in little basket ground feeders is the starling don't see many starlings and um, I was thrilled to bits yesterday because um, I went to this uh, farm excuse me I had a bit of my teeth yesterday and there must have been I roughly counted 600 if not more could have been up to a thousand starlings I've never seen them like that before in a farm situation they probably are um, as I say the field to my right was full of them and they were all pecking in the floor for something um, I think the farm has done something to the to the land must have brought worms up or whatever I don't know or oh, that um, it could be a time of year where insects larvae hatch or it could be anything i know it's winter but it could be some process happening within nature which attracts them 
Uh, it's more, I think it's more though with the land cultivation where it might bring worms and bugs up. And I don't know. But to the right, I, I roughly counted there were 400 on in that field. And I looked to the left, well, everywhere I looked, just like a carpet of them. It was lovely to see, but I, I'd love to know what they were eating. But they were really going at it, whatever it was they were enjoying. Couldn't see anything. They were too far, but there must have been, yeah, as I say, about 600 to um, between 600 and 1,000, you know. And it was nice to see them. I haven't seen them on the feeders here for a long, long time. Um, and that's on the feed on the on the on the ground feeders, and the, the old robin, you know, he comes every day. <laughs> he looks at me, and then he has a bit of a, a nosh on the suet ball on the fat balls, and then he'll go from there and fly off and rub his beak on the branch, you know, and and then comes comes back to the seed. Then I leave a bit in a tree. And then uh, off you he's quite happy then. Mm. I went to another farm. Well, it used to be a farm, but <coughs> a family bought it. And um, it's like a private holding now with land, if you like. And they keep animals, uh, pigs, ducks, geese, um, well, for the emu, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it, I had to look twice, I was looking for Rod Hull everywhere, he's deceased now, he's probably good. Hmm. Rod Hull and emu, do you remember him? Right then, God, I talk some shite, but you knew that anyway. That's what you're here, isn't it? <laughs> right, my own made from scratch beef curry. Don't know how that looks on camera, but uh, it does taste very nice. And as I said, because I filmed the making of it yesterday, so this is the marinated day after version. And the video you'll see tomorrow is it's quite watery, but of course that reduces as I simmer and then leaving it run cold in the fridge back today. It's, it's, it's all sort of um, marinated overnight and uh, it's gone much thicker. It's like a, well you can tell, quite thick now and uh, very nice. And that's the... And the beef melts, don't need teeth, beautiful, very nice indeed. Mm. And if you enjoy cooking or having a go, when, when you make something it's a success. Um, I'm not brilliant at anything, but I can do it. And that's all, it, that's all you want, you don't need to be master chef. If you can cook a meal and enjoy it, that's, that's all it's about. And um, yeah, and it feels nice then when you, you so there's something about making your own stuff. And but I know a lot of people, it's time, and you know, everybody's working long hours these days. And, oh. and like I say, you know, people say, oh, we don't work as hard as we used to. In one way, no, but in another, we double treble what people did. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, when you look at it years and years ago, it didn't matter what position in life you held in a job, you roughly, the average person, worked from nine in the morning till five at night. And when you went home, you went home. There was no mobile, there was no laptop, there was no contact. Only emergency on the telephone. And you stopped your job, five o'clock, went home, family time all night. Get up in the morning, breakfast with the family. Then, 
work nine to five and you had two lives work home but now uh, it has its good points and its bad points but now a lot of people especially if they're in a quite a high position in a, in a job in a management whatever I don't know it's all um, mobile laptop emails you're just constantly 24 hours in contact you're there and people can't switch off and you know it's not good is it it's not good for you, you gotta, some people are good I speak to you see I deliver to a lot of people at work from home and I the first thing I ask them how do you manage do you because some people can't work from home they just sort of want to watch Jeremy Kyle or they have, well, I'll have another cup of tea then I'll do something but others have said the way they cope with that is they've made a designated room as an office furthest away from the house and they go to it like they go into an office and then they can work and get on with it then come home if you like even though you are home and they they do it that way but um uh, others love it they, you know they can work this i don't know it's i suppose the good thing with working at home you can work at night if you wanted and have a bit of time off in the day what the hell am i going on about <laughs> the hot and spicy anyway i'm going thanks for watching <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget uh, that helps you if you want to work from home <laughs> that I do <sighs> don't ask oh dear, this made me go bloody do a loud tap thanks for watching and um, well I'll see you tomorrow in the making of this curry video take care